Hi, it's Shirley and welcome to a new video. So today I'm going to be doing my August TBR and I'm really, really excited. I have some very big things happening in August. So realistically, I don't know if I will read that much. It's going to be a bit of a weird month, but I also do have a week off at the end of August. So hopefully I can get a lot of reading done that week although that week may be used to do something related to the big thing that's happening, which I will tell you guys about when it's officially happening, if that makes sense. But yeah, basically, I have a huge stack of books here that I may read, and I'm probably also going to mood read and then pick up a few audiobooks throughout the month, but I thought I'd just go through some of these. So if you would like to see my TBR for August, then please keep watching this video. So the first book I have here is actually a reread, and I don't know for sure if I will reread this in August but I'm kind of in the mood for it and I think the third book in the series comes out in a few months time and I want to read this and then the sequel which I haven't read yet before that one comes out if that makes sense. So the book I'm talking about is Seven and Dove by Shelby Mihora. I'm pretty sure I'm not really going to need to go into what this is about at all. This is one of the most hyped books on booktube, booktok, everywhere, everyone has read this book or seen it. I read this last year and I loved it and I gave it five stars. I just found the main character absolutely hilarious and I liked the romance because it's enemies to lovers and there's like the marriage trope in here and just all the tropes I really like and I just really enjoyed it. Um, I've not heard great things about the sequel so that's kind of off-putting but I do want to read it. So basically we follow Louise LeBlanc who is the daughter of this really awful witch and she actually fled the coven because I think they were going to like sacrifice her or something like that. I can't even remember but her mum's basically like super evil and really horrible. So she kind of like forsakes all her magic, she does whatever she can to survive in this little like village but the only thing is where she lives people like her are hunted so witches are hunted they're killed and there is like a special like group of people who hunt witches and kill them so then we have reed who is the love interest and reed is actually one of these witch hunters and he hates witches he's been like programmed by like the church to hate witches and everything and one day he kind of crosses paths with louise and yeah one thing leads to another and i can't remember exactly what happened but they basically end up having to get married and he doesn't know that she's a witch so obviously there's all that and then we've got like a bit of enemies to lovers in here and magic and like war and just it's a really really good book I really enjoyed it and I really liked the main character she's really funny and I like the romance so I do really want to reread this and I'm on an absolute romance binge right now so because there's romance in here I really want to read it then next we have another dark romance book. So you all know I recently read A Touch of Darkness and I absolutely loved it. One of my favourite books ever. And I did actually start this but just put it down because I wasn't in the mood. Um, but that is the sequel which is A Touch of Ruin by Scarlet St. Clair. So basically this series is a Hades and Persephone retelling. And it's a really dark smutty romance and it's just stunning and I absolutely adored the first book so obviously I want to read the next book. I did briefly start it on the train down to London and I got 18 pages in but then I was like mm, I'm just not in the mood for this right now, don't know why. Um, I'm still really really excited for it and hopefully I will pick this up and possibly the third book during the month of August. I don't know if I definitely will but this is definitely one that I'm putting on my TBR for a maybe. Yeah, I hopefully will pick this one up. Then next is going to be an audio pick and that is The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. I've been meaning to read this book for the longest time. You all know I love Greek mythology and this is one I haven't gotten to. So I do have a proof for her new book which is Women of Troy which does actually come out at the end of August. So I really would like to read this ASAP and then read the proof before it comes out. I don't know if I will. Like I said, I have a busy month and I'm definitely going to be prioritising other books. If you guys have read The Song of Achilles, which I know a lot of people have, in there there is a character called Briasis. I don't want to spoil anything for A Song of Achilles, but basically in here we follow Briasis and her point of view from the Trojan War. Because obviously in Song of Achilles we're following, you know, Patroclus and Achilles. And Briasis is like a sad character. Obviously these are two different authors, but this is like the myth and the legend. Um, so this is all from Briasis' point of view. It's from a female's point of view. And it will be really, really interesting to see the War of Troy kind of from her view. And also, God, my dogs are barking so loud. I'm so sorry. 
So yeah, I'm really, really excited to see things from her point of view. I think it'll be really interesting to see this from a female gaze. And I'm just interested to see what Pat Barker's writing style is like because I've never read it before. Yeah, I can't wait to read this. Definitely be picking it up on audio. I really hope the audiobook is good. And then I will hopefully move on to the proof, but I don't know for sure. Then next we have my Patreon buddy read pick for August, which I'm super excited for. So the book that we're reading in August is The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin, and I'm so excited for this book. This book seems very, very unique, and I just think it's going to be a really, really fun read. And I love anything witchy, as you guys know, so obviously... I'm excited for this. So this has a lot of kind of interesting themes in it, kind of like climate change as well, which I think is really, really interesting. But in this, we follow Clara and Clara is a witch. Basically in this world for centuries, witches have maintained the climate and kept things how they should be. And their power peaks during the time they're born. So if they're born in summer, then that's when they're the most powerful and they will kind of sort things out for summer and so on. And unfortunately, the atmosphere is just becoming more erratic. So their power's fading and they don't really have as much control over the climate as they used to so things are basically just not going great <laughs> then we have clara now clara has the magic of all seasons which is very very rare and everyone's kind of looking at her to fix things so obviously that's like a lot of pressure for her it says here in autumn clara wants something to do with her power it's wild and volatile in winter the world is on the precipice of disaster Clara finally accepts that she's the only one who can make a difference. In spring, she falls for Sang, the witch training her. As her magic grows, so do her feelings for him. Then it says, in summer, Clara must choose between her power and her happiness, her duty and the people she loves before she loses everything. From a stunning new voice comes a story about a powerful witch who must decide if using her volatile magic to help the world is worth the price of losing the person she loves most. So yeah, I think this sounds really, really unique and I'm just really excited to see where the author goes with this. And yeah, this is going to be the Patreon buddy read for August. So if you would like to join us, we do have a Discord to discuss the book. And I do post reading updates on there and film a spoiler filled reading vlog for this book. So if you would like to join in on any of that, then make sure you click the link to my Patreon in my description box. But yeah, very, very excited for this one. Then next I have Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi. So I've never read any books by this author and I have recently acquired the other ones that I needed. So I already had Permanent Record, which I bought on accident. Caitlin recommended Emergency Contact to me, like... I think the start of this year or maybe it was last year I can't even remember now and I couldn't remember what it was in the bookstore and I accidentally bought permanent record um so yeah I finally picked up emergency contact and I also picked up yoke so the reason that I've bought this book I wasn't really too like interested in it at first but me and my friends are actually going to be doing a, a buddy read and like a little mini 24 hour readathon reading this book together at the end of August. So I'm reading this with Lily, Aria, Emily, Kay and Kat and it's going to be a really fun time. Just going to be nice. We're going to FaceTime all day, read this together. I think we're all going to vlog and it'll just be a really cute little day of reading. So yeah, I am looking forward to reading it now just because I'll be reading it with all the girls and it should be really fun. I don't know too much of what this is about. I just know that it follows two different sisters. So we have June and Jane in here who are sisters and June is the older sister. And it says here, Jane is an emotionally stunted, self-obsessed basket case who lives in squalor. And has really bad taste in men and needs to get to class and stop wasting her mum and dad's money. And it says once upon a time they were really, really close with each other and they were like really, really alike. But now they're going apart, I want absolutely nothing to do with each other. And I think they're both living in New York at the moment. But then sadly, June ends up getting cancer and this obviously changes absolutely everything and it says here flung together by circumstance housing woes and family secrets will the sisters learn more about each other than they're willing to confront and what if while helping june jane has to face the fact that maybe she's sick too so yeah i'm really intrigued by this i've never read anything like this before and i'm excited to read something from this author so yeah i'm really looking forward to this one then next we have a romance which is spoiler alert by olivia dade i can't remember whose video i saw this in but i did see this in someone's video and i decided to pick it up a while ago and i just haven't gotten to it so as you guys well i don't know if the vlog will have gone up yet but I recently read like eight romance books in a week or something like that like I was on a binge and I still am I'm still totally in the mood for romance it's so easy to read and I just love it so yeah gonna be reading all the romance hopefully in August <laughs> yeah this one's called spoiler alert and this is kind of like a fan fiction kind of romance which I thought was quite cool kind of reminded me of um I think it's fangirl by rainbow royale or geekerella I can't remember which book one of those two maybe both kind of remind me of this but basically in here we have two characters we have marcus and we have april and marcus is actually like some famous like actor on this show 
but in secret he's also a fanfic writer and he basically releases like all of his frustrations that he has from the show through his fanfic and obviously like if anyone found out like he'd just like lose his job so yeah he keeps it like all hidden and like a secret identity kind of thing but then we have april and she's like a massive massive fan of marcus and his show like she's like obsessed a total fangirl and she also has kind of kept her fangirl and cosplay secret and hidden from her real life but then she decides to just post her latest costume creation on twitter she's like fuck it i'm gonna do it here her plus size take goes viral and when marcus asks her out to spite her critics truth officially becomes stranger than fan fiction and then they go on a date and marcus realizes like that he wants a lot more from her than just like a one-time thing with so many secrets between them can they ever stop hiding or will a match made in fandom and never make it in real life so yeah i just think that sounds really really cute i like the whole fangirl fandom kind of vibes that are in here i think this will be really sweet quite funny and just like a really nice story and i'm really really excited to read this i really hope i do get to this one in august but i do have a ton of romance books that i want to read so i may end up picking something else up but this is the one at the moment that like i'm most interested in reading Okay, so then next we have Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. Do I even need to say anything about this book? <laughs> like, everyone is obsessed with the Brown sisters. I recently read Get a Life, Chloe Brown. I gave it four stars, but it was more a 3.5 for me. I think it's just because it got so hyped, I just didn't enjoy it as much because, yeah, I think I just built up, like, to too high of an expectation and... It was still really, really fun and 3.5 stars is an amazing rating still. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really cute, but it just didn't quite do it for me. Not like some of the other romance books I've read recently. So I'm hoping I'll enjoy this a lot more because this has the fake dating trope in here, which I absolutely love. So I feel like I'm definitely going to prefer this one. Um, but in here, we follow Danica, who's Chloe's sister. I think she's the younger sister or the middle sister. And she's very career driven and she's not really into romance or anything. Like she just wants to like focus on a career. And all she's looking for at the moment is just the perfect friend with benefits. She's not interested in actual dating. She just wants to get laid, basically. <laughs> And then there's this fire drill where she works and it goes kind of wrong and this security guard called Zaffa rescues her and I think a video of it goes like viral and everyone's like fangirling over them and shipping them together and there's like a hashtag and everything. So in the end her and Danny decide to fake a relationship for the sake of like everyone kind of pestering them and stuff. So says here grumpy Zaff is secretly romantic and he's determined to corrupt Danny's stone cold realism. With every fake date and midnight meeting Danny's easy lay becomes more complex than her thesis. Has her wish backfired or is the universe waiting for her to take a hint? So yeah I'm really really excited for this. I think this is going to be so good. I think I'm going to love this so much more and I'm really really excited for this. It just sounds like my kind of story and obviously everyone loves these books. I'm so late to these books I know but I'm finally doing it so at least there's that. Then I have another two romance books I definitely do want to read. So whilst I was on holiday the other week and I was reading loads of romance I was speaking to my friend Caitlin from Kate Literature and I was asking her you know do you have any really good romance recommendations like I'm on a total binge and she recommended these Ellie Kennedy books to me and then not long after I ordered these I ended up watching Jamie and Chloe and Caitlin's like 24 hour readathon romance readathon vlogs and saw that a lot of them had read it in these vlogs or like talking about it and I was like okay that is like sealed the deal for me like I need to read these ASAP um so Caitlin told me to get these two but I know there's like a book two so that I have book one and three she said these were like the best ones but you don't have to read them in that order they're just kind of like part of a off-campus series um, but they're all different characters I think. So yeah I got the deal and I also got the score and these are huge paperbacks to be fair like they're massive um but I'm really, really excited to read both of these so I can't even remember what both of them are about but this one says she's about to make a deal with the college bad boy Hannah Wells has finally found someone who turns her on but while she might be confident in every other area of her life she's carting around a full set of baggage when it comes to sex and seduction if she wants to get a crush's attention she'll have to step out of her comfort zone and make him take notice even if it means tutoring the annoying childish cocky captain of the hockey team in exchange for a pretend date all Garrett Graham has ever wanted is to play professional hockey after graduation, but his plummeting GPA is threatening everything he's worked so hard for. 
If helping a sarcastic brunette make another guy jealous or help him secure his position on the team, he's all for it. But when one expected kiss leads to the wildest sex of both their lives, it doesn't take long for Garrett to realise that pretend isn't going to cut it. Now he just has to convince Hannah that the man she wants looks a lot like him. So yeah, I think this sounds so good. Fake dating again. Yes, please. It's my favourite trope. I can't wait to read this. And then this one. It says, he knows the score on and off the ice. Ali Hayes is in crisis mode. With graduation looming, she still doesn't have the first clue about what she's going to do after college. To make matters worse, she's nursing a broken heart thanks to the end of a long-term relationship. Wild rebound sex is definitely not the solution to her problems, but gorgeous hockey star Dean D. Laurentiis is impossible to resist because even if the future is uncertain, it sure as heck won't include the king of one-night stands. Dean always gets what he wants. Girls, grades, recognition, girls. He's a ladies' man. He's yet to meet a woman who's immune to his charms. Until Ali. For one night, the feisty blonde rocked his entire world. Now she wants to be friends. Nope, it's not over until he says it's over. Dean is on full pursuit. But when life rocking changes strike, he starts to wonder if maybe it's time to stop focusing on scoring and shoot for love. So yeah, I'm so excited for both of these books. I just know I'm gonna be obsessed with them and especially because Caitlin, Chloe and Jamie all love them. I know I'm gonna love them. I just know it. So I'm really, really excited to read these and to just talk about them with Caitlin when I do. So yeah, I can't wait to read all the romance. That's pretty much like all the books on my TBR but now I do have some a manga and a graphic novel. Oh and also a poetry book which I just nearly dropped. I'll talk about the poetry book quickly first. So I have Soft Thorns by Bridget DeVoe. I got this a while ago and just haven't read it. Honestly no idea what kind of poetry is in here. I know it's modern poetry but I was a sucker for the cover and I'd seen this online a few times so I thought I would check it out. And yeah, I just thought a poetry book would be quite nice to put in there. I might try and do a 24 hour readathon somewhere, so this would be like a good one to read. And I just enjoy reading poetry sometimes to break things up. Oh, my hatchet's bookmarks in here from when I was with Cat and Tasman. That's made me sad. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just looking forward to this one to break kind of reads up. It's an easy light read, so this will be quite fun to read. Then going on to a manga, I have a Fruit Basket Volume 1. This is um, the collector's edition one, um, so it has like a lot of volumes in here. Don't really know what it's about, I just know it's supposed to be like really cute. I think romance, I think the fam found family trope as well. I've never watched the anime or anything like that, but I bought this randomly ages ago. And I've been really into cutesy manga recently, like Waiting for Spring and Orange and A Haru Ride. And I just really want to read this one now. So I figured this would be a nice one to put on the TBR when I feel like reading something that isn't a book. So I am excited to read this and I hope that I really like it. And then I do have Waiting for Spring on my TBR. So I read volume one in July and I absolutely loved it. And I checked to order, wait, maybe it was June I read it. I think it was June or was it July? I honestly can't remember now. It was June or July I read it and I loved it. And I immediately wanted to buy the other volumes. And when I, oh, I remember when I read it. I read it when I was with Kat. Okay, so yeah, I really, really loved it. It was so sweet. It was literally like one of my favorite manga I'd ever read. So I immediately wanted to buy the other volumes and they were all like unavailable everywhere. I don't know if there's like a reprinting issue or something, but yeah, I couldn't get them. So I eventually managed to track down volumes three and four and five, I think, but couldn't get volume two and then it came back in stock on Book Depository. So I have volumes three and four here, but I'm just waiting for volume two to arrive. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have volume five and six also in order. I can't remember for sure. Um, we'll just see what turns up in the post. As soon as volume two gets here, I will be binging two, three and four in one go during August because I'm just obsessed and I need to know what happens. I'm gonna reread volume one again as well because I just loved it that much. But yeah, I'm so excited to read these. I'm just really loving romancy manga at the moment so if you have any really cute romance manga like waiting for spring or orange or um a harry ride anything kind of like that please leave recommendations down below i need more i need more <laughs> anyway the last book on my tbr is a graphic novel however i don't know if i will definitely read this specific one i have a lot of the dc ink graphic novels which are kind of like the ya dc novels not novels graphic novels and i just grabbed a random one of my shelf because i definitely want to read another one at some point this month i just don't know if it will definitely be this one um but this is under the moon a catwoman tale and this is by lauren and miracle and this is literally just catwoman but as a teen and yeah i really love this cover i'm not too sure on this art style 
that's what's put me off reading this specific one but I feel like the story will be really good and I really enjoyed Poison Ivy when I read that recently so I definitely get more into the DC Inc graphic novels again so I might pick this one up I might pick up a different one I don't know I can't remember if Teen Titans Beast Boy Loves Raven or I can't remember what the title's called but I don't know if that comes out in August maybe it's August I hope so if that comes out in August I will definitely be reading that but yeah I'm definitely going to read a DC Inc graphic novel at some point again if i do a 24 hour readathon i will read this but i'm so excited and that's pretty much everything on my tbr my room has gone so dark i don't know why oh it's about to rain that's why okay well, yeah my room's gone dark um but yeah i hope you guys did enjoy this video and i just can't wait for august like i'm so excited to share the big like thing i've been going on out for the last few months i just don't want to jinx it and talk about it now and then it doesn't happen so as soon as it happens i will let you guys know and you will understand why i've been all over the place recently and then i'll be able to tell you guys and film all of the content that this thing will enable me to do which i'm so excited about so yeah i'm really looking forward to august but i'm actually kind of stressed because it's going to be very very busy and i just don't know how much time i'll get for reading hopefully i do um but yeah we'll see anyway <laughs> please let me know in the comments if you have read any of the books on my tbr and what your thoughts were of them or if you have any of those romance and manga recommendations please please let me know and also pop a comment down and let me know what you're planning to read in august i know august is still like summertime but for some people like me as soon as it gets to august i'm already thinking about it pretty much being halloween so yeah maybe people are reading spooky books i don't know um but yeah let me know in the comments what you will be reading i really hope that you guys did enjoy this video i will have these books are linked in the description box along with all my social media and my Patreon where you can find extra reading vlogs from me, live shows, a Discord, a buddy read and just all the good stuff. It's all on my Patreon so I'd love to have you join there. But yeah, please do give this a little thumbs up and a leave a heart emoji if you did make it to the end of this vlog and don't forget to subscribe. But yes, I hope you're all safe and well. I hope you're reading lots of good books and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!